coming to you from the Big Island of Hawaii. This is the Songs and Stories podcast. Aloha. On today's show, I caught up with Big Island singer-songwriter Robert Savory at the Hilo Palace Theater to discuss his music. Born in Louisiana and growing up on Oahu, Robert has opened up for country music heavyweights Alabama, Merle Haggard, and the Judds. The LA Times once touted the Savory Brothers as a force in country music, and Billboard magazine called them country music standouts. In addition to the interview, we'll also get to hear two originals and discuss the backstories behind them. Aloha, Robert. Aloha. Uh, first of all, uh, for those that don't know you or your music, uh, can you give us a little bit of background on that? Sure. Um, I grew up on Oahu on the windward side. And um, so in fourth grade, we had the choice to e- in Hawaiian studies class, we either had to wear the little lava lava and dance hula or play the ukulele. So. That's where I got my music start, because I was too embarrassed. So I started playing the ukulele there, and I played teen clubs around, you know, Kanyoi and stuff like that, and played. And then uh, my brother and I had a band, and we tur- toured the U.S. quite a bit, and we were kind of a country rock band. Mm-hmm. And then we ended up playing, uh, you know, the, it just happened at that time, the money and everything was in the real country honky-tonk, so we really went deep into the country music there. The funny thing was that while I was listening, and I love country music, I, I mean, I listen, but what I was listening to at home was, you know, Ravi Shankar and African music and, and you know, all kinds of, <laughs> yeah, and Brazilian music. And so I, I've always had a, a interest in a real wide variety of music and stuff. And I've always wrote songs. So my brother and I, at one point, um, as a country band, we won the Marlboro country music contest and we went on tour we were the opening band for the Judds Alabama and Merle Haggard and we played stadiums and things and uh, that was that was a big thrill there and um, when did you come to the Big Island well uh, I came to the Big Island 12 years ago I lived on Kauai for seven years and uh, always knew I was coming back to Hawaii so you know the scene changed everything changed over there so uh I was in LA doing coffee shops and, and really pushing more of my original songs and things. And I brought my wife over here on vacation a couple times and she just said, forget it, we're moving. And so, <laughs> so she dragged me back here sooner than I thought. And so we, had, we, we live out Poho side and we got some acreage and, and you know, we're growing lots of food and yeah. we, we, we love the life here. Yeah. And I, I was... The one thing I was worried about was the, the music scene and the social scene here, and, and I've been more than pleased with the amazing players that, that, I, that are here and that uh, I get to play with and I get to go out and hear. So uh, I'm really happy to be here, and, and it's a very fulfilling place to be. What's it been like for you during this COVID-19 phase that we're in? Uh, well, music's just starting to return. How have you been keeping your music going? You know, it's been a very positive thing for for us, just because it's been a chance to just really stay home. We got endless projects at home. I've got a lot of time to really work with uh, doing some recording and songwriting. Mm-hmm. I belong to the Big Writing Big Island Songwriters Group, and uh, and uh, been writing songs with them, and and um, so I, I, it's helped me as far as getting more focused and stuff. I do miss gigging. I mean, the last gig I had was at the Space and Light over here, the Cava Bar, yeah. and then it all, everything got canceled all of a sudden, yeah. and uh, I can't wait to get back to it, uh-huh. but at the same time, it's, it's been a good break for me. I, I, I have not experienced, you know, the pain and misery many people have done on the mainland here, mm-hmm. but, but this island, uh, since we got thousands of miles of ocean, it's, it's, it's been really kind of nice to have everything kind of slow down and get back to the basics here. Well, tell me about uh, the two songs you played today. Um, the Monkey Pod Tree song I played, my daughter, she went to Kuo uh, school, and there was a huge monkey pod tree there that at the end of school, the teachers used to, have a, she used to say, 
meet me under the monkey pod tree, you know, and I got that idea for the song. Now that school is 50 feet under lava. It got wiped out, you know, my daughter's school got taken out and the monkey pod tree is gone, which I didn't know at the time when I wrote it. Aloha, my name is Robert Savory. I'm here with Lauren Antolik on bass and Mike Aloha on trumpet. And we are live from the empty palace. Uh, the song I'm gonna play here is called Under the Monkey Pod Tree. open field, they dug a hole and planted a seed a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago. A trunk of a tree with its arms open wide, tall and strong we stand side by side.
Yes, so the other song is just a, uh, a song I wanted to write forever, just a song about having a good song to sing. You know, what a blessing it is to just be able to pick up your guitar and, and sing all the memories and all the feelings and all the things, you know, as a musician that we have, you know, if, if you have an audience or not. I'm Robert Savory, and I'd like to do a song here called I've Got a Good Song to Sing.
you want to talk a little bit about your songwriting process? How you? Uh, yeah, my songwriting process is to write a lot of terrible songs all the time, and then every once in a while, in the middle of a terrible song, I get a decent idea, and, and it just starts coming through me, and I get something good. I use uh, the abundance plan, so I write a lot. I write every day, pretty much, and then, you know, every once in a while, I, I get something that's that I like, and, mm -hmm. and that's... But I, there was a time in my life where I really pursued. I went to Nashville, and I worked in Nashville as a songwriter a little bit. I worked at Comedy World as a writer in Los Angeles, and um, Nashville hated me. You know, they hired me because uh, they said, oh, you're so different, we need a little spice, but they never used anything I wrote. Mm -hmm. And um, But I learned a lot from them mm -hmm. as far as writing a, this under structure and and things like that. Oh, well, looks like your two bandmates have joined yes, you. Yes, <laughs> with Michael, uh, I would just say with, with Mike Aloha here, I, I was at this party in Pahoa and there was like 10 bands gonna play, but the generator broke and there was no electricity, so everybody went home. And then there was people from different bands were there and we started jamming together. And it was one of the best musical experiences I've ever had. And finally, they got the generator going, and, and whoever's left over ended up being in a band. And uh, we've been kind of close friends and mates ever since. Lauren, I've been playing with for a couple of years here. I heard him play, and I just begged him to come play with me, basically. What's the first thing you want to do when you get back and play a live gig? What are you looking forward to? Uh, well, I'm looking forward to playing for people, for an audience. And, and, uh, uh, also, I have a lot of new songs that I, I'd like to bring out, which has been an advantage of this time off to... Is there something special you're working on now? No, there's, there's quite a few, you know, and, and a lot of times uh, I, I, I'm all excited about a song and I play it live and it doesn't work. It might work as a recording, but not as a live song, and then other songs I don't, so it, it's, it's interesting to play live because you find out what really works with an audience and what people get right away. And, mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't care, we just jam and have a good time, and people appreciate that, too. Yeah. yeah. I can confirm that he, he's written a lot of really bad songs. Yeah. <laughs> but even his bad songs are pretty darn good. I, I've gotten to hear some of the, the beginnings, the genesis of some of those tunes, and uh, they're really bad and really, really cool, too. So it's fun to be, uh, be playing with Robert, and uh, it's been fun just to hang out with him and, and hear these these little seeds begin, and, and then later to hear how he sculpted this brilliant tune. He's like, oh yeah, you know that thing? I took it and I, and I wrote this melody, and then, and then I changed the melody, and then I changed the chords, and then I changed it again and again and again. And, and then I may not see him for a while and come back, and it's just like this, this pearl came out of this thing, you know, that I heard him singing in his yard one day. It's just really, really fun, yeah. super inspiring. And Lauren here uh, works for USGS, so he always keeps me updated on the volcano, what's going on and all that. Yeah, that's, that's how they, I really got into this, this band, is, is my volcanic knowledge that these guys just wanted to be safe living down in, in Lower Puna, <laughs> down on the Rift Zone. And uh, it turned out I could play, play music, too, so uh, they kept me around. But uh, yeah, Robert's just, just really great to play with, you know, I'm just really impressed with his, his songwriting um, prowess or songwriting skills and yeah he just covers a lot of ground you know I think as far as um, you know folk music country music mm -hmm. blues jazz kind of cr uh, Creole kind of New Orleans you know Tex-Mex you know he kind of hits all the he on all the styles and so it's just super fun to to, to get to participate in that kind of music and, and play it um, in front of people well, is there anything else you'd like to add before we go? Just thanks to everyone here at the, the palace yeah. for, for... What was it uh, like playing in front of with no audience here? It was, you know, it was a little nerve-wracking. I mean, just, uh, you know, I think there's a little bit of comfort in, uh, in having an audience to interact with. And I think that's kind of part of the, the deal with music is that it's kind of a give-and-take thing where you're, where you're sharing, you know, and the audience is receiving, and, mm -hmm. and it kind of feeds back into itself. And uh, when that audience is not there... Um, I think one aspect of that performance is, is missing, mm. so um, definitely miss that, but um, you know, the opportunity to get to play in front of the cameras and, and to, to share it with a larger audience out on the internet, I think that's, that's great and I think that's important. Yeah, looking forward to seeing how the product comes out. What's the best way to find, for fans to find your music? I do, I'm, have a meager YouTube channel that I'm, I'm actually going to be posting quite a bit more in the next few months. 
Yeah, so I have some videos, some of the live stuff, some of it's just right here in Hilo Town and different places and things like that. And these guys play in a lot of the shows here. This first time I've ever played at the Palace, and it's such a wonderful historic historical place that uh, I mean, it's a great feeling in here, great sound in here. So, are, are you on social media too? Or? I'm only on Facebook. Okay. I'm kind of low tech, but I'm trying to get with the program here a little more. Mahalo for your time today. Is there something else? Yeah, I mean, for years, for years, I've been playing at the Tin Shack Bakery on Second Saturday, and Yempo, yeah, oh, and I've been playing Third Fridays at the Cava Bar. In Hilo Cava Bar, and then here and there other places like the Tea Room and up in Waimea and a few here and there playing around, but catch us around town. And uh, I guess that's it. Mahalo, guys. Thanks for your time. Mahalo, yeah. And Steve, okay. you're doing a great thing for all of us. I really appreciate Thank you so it. Much. You've been listening to the Songs and Stories podcast, which is a production of Big Island Music Magazine. You can find us on the web at bigislandmusic.net and be sure to follow us on Facebook. Thanks for listening to Songs and Stories.